When we think about asteroids, meteors, craters, and all of that, many images come to mind. And I know for me, when looking into the truth about creation and Earth and seeing that there is a firmament, one of the biggest questions I had was, what about asteroids? What about all of these meteors and comets and craters? Because these craters are still there. We can see them. What on Earth is going on? And how would these things make it through the firmament? What are they? Well, those questions have answers. I know you have those questions. So I'll put this together for you. Hope it makes sense and is understandable. If not, ask more questions because you guys are asking some really awesome questions and they're very important. Because asteroids do serve a purpose in an upcoming deception and the upcoming deception that we were warned about has been coming true step by step, just like it was said. So let's first look at these craters. Here are some good examples of craters. And as you can see, they look nearly identical they're from different locations and what caused them well it depends because one of them has a known cause and it's the one on the left here it has a known cause it was caused by pressure underground through groundwater that was superheated by magma which built up a lot of pressure through the steam and all of that and it made an explosion that shot outward from below which is why you can see the edges of the crater are slightly elevated from that pressure similar to when you're cooking something on your stove and it's boiling over and you see those bubbles that pop sometimes they look like that after they pop well here is one on the right and we are told because we weren't there when it happened that something struck the earth from space even though it looks exactly like the ones that we know today to be caused by pressure similar to volcanoes and gases erupting or whatever it is that causes these explosions the one on the right, we're told, was caused from something that smashed into Earth from space. They even have a little sort of like gift shop or museum right here with a metal rock on display. And it is claimed that this rock was indeed the one that caused all of this. Not a very big rock, fairly big, but it's the one they say caused all this, or at least part of the rock that caused it. They can't find the rest of the debris, but there you have it. And we, we buy into that. People go there. This quite a popular place to go and hang out and say and just admire the beautiful crater that we are assuming was caused by an asteroid and there's animations when you go in there you can see these animations that just adds to the realism of it all but when you look around the world you see that these craters are still occurring and appearing they're not a not a unknown phenomenon we are aware of what causes these most of the time and you see lots of articles about these and if we didn't know and we weren't here and these things happened a long time ago we could be led to believe that this was caused by something traveling really fast and impacting earth and we would believe it because you know our imaginations kind of fill in the rest when somebody gives us some information we kind of go with it and fill in the missing pieces but let's look here at a crater that is slightly taller than the one that you saw earlier and then again taller starting to look familiar and when you have a lot of pressure built up over time it starts to look a little bit more familiar like the ones that we made in school the little models we made the volcanoes really familiar this is just a taller version of what you saw and except for the fact that it has actual lava spewing out of it and so lots of lots of visuals and physical evidence we have to understand where these craters came from they were not caused by things flying in from deep space but there are some things that we have seen recently flying through the air and we're told it's from space and we believe it I believed it I've seen something similar to this here this was in Russia it's very famous footage and of course it was captured on many cameras because cameras are everywhere now and this is dash cam footage of this thing and I just kinda of put a line next to it so you can see it's a fairly straight line but what is this thing what caused this beautiful display of lights because when this thing flew through the air it was it looked like a sparkler on the 4th of July flying through the air or a Roman candle and when it hit the ground it was an amazing display of light almost like lightning just a big explosion of light and so what caused all of that well when we do some investigation we find out that there are these 
objects showing up right after these things happen right after these events happen and you see something fly through the sky there's these objects they're pretty much like giant fireworks I'm sure that we will figure out exactly how they use these things or where they project them from they have things way up high and we don't know what goes on up there it's not deep space but near the firmament pretty high lots of different things that could be shooting out these fireworks and all we see is them when they light up of course we don't see where they come from they could be launched from the ground who knows but definitely these are not meteorites smashing into the earth and you can tell when you look at them these aren't coming from aliens they want us to believe that because asteroids are part of an upcoming deception and we'll get into that towards the end but let's look at the distance that Earth would move because someone brought up a really good question in the comments of one of my videos about asteroids. They said they always tell us that asteroids are headed toward Earth as if Earth isn't moving. But they said, wouldn't Earth be moving way faster than these asteroids? Because after all, we're moving 490,000 miles per hour, traveling millions of miles per day through space. And I thought about it did the math myself and just wondering out of curiosity if an asteroid were coming toward Earth like the one you see here so let's say this asteroid here is two minutes away from Earth how far would Earth move because I didn't know this and I could go up to pretty much anybody who believes in the globe and ask them hey how far does Earth move every minute they do not know I've learned more about the globe than I've ever known from looking into this and the truth is, or actually the false truth that we all were taught is, that if the heliocentric model were true, Earth would move this far. Look at my cursor right here as a reference point. The Earth would move this far within that minute. Okay, so pretty much the distance of its own diameter, it would move that far in just one minute. So if an asteroid two minutes away coming towards Earth we would already be gone we would not be in the same area but when you see the animations of asteroids coming towards Earth Earth is just sitting still and these things are going straight toward it and it freaks us out because we're like this could happen but if the heliocentric model is correct most likely we would be out of the way but if there was a chance that we moved at the exact speeds necessary with this asteroid and the asteroid let's say the asteroid was coming in at a higher angle and we matched it perfectly and we hit the asteroid think about if you've ever thrown anything out of a car window at a moving target does that object appear to go in a straight line no it's a curved <laughs> path because you have the movement of the car in reference in a reference to the object moving and so it's always going to have a curved line not only that it's hitting the atmosphere so that also slows it down but it's not a straight path you have two movements for spinning and circling the Sun so lots of different motions going on anything flying into Earth would be in a really weird flight path definitely not straight on and it would not look like the straight line we saw earlier with the asteroid from Russia but let's look at some news about these asteroids because I was watching a news article a while back and I've done a video about this before where they were telling us about this giant derp face asteroid look at it I mean tell me that's not them just making fun of us this asteroid is super gigantic made of this precious metal that could be worth 10 quadrillion dollars and they are sending a probe to investigate it there's no real pictures of it but they're sending a probe to investigate it they were gonna spend billions of dollars to send something toward it and hopefully orbit around it and maybe get a sample of it I don't know how this thing wouldn't smash into it and explode but they were going to send a probe to it to find out what it's made of that's literally what they said right after they told us that it's worth quadrillions of dollars and now we're going to send something there to find out what it's worth so in other words they're just making this stuff up and probably just using that to get more money I don't know but none of it makes sense and it's all science fiction but we've never seen them in real life we have animations and pictures to make them real to us but let's look at something that has to do with the moon and how these craters formed on the moon because we know how the craters formed on earth 
the moon was a mystery. I couldn't figure that out. That was one of those questions that I had just burning like, oh my gosh, it's driving me crazy. What caused these things? Was it the Tower of Babel? Were they launching stuff at the moon? I mean, what happened? I really don't know. But I've, I've came across a video from a really cool channel. I'm going to share it, watch it, and look at the moon, make some comparisons, and you'll see that it's quite impressive. Because we all know now that there are properties of the firmament that are different than we thought. Like these sprites. If you look at these sprites, you can see that these sprites, which are coming through the firmament, have these explosive properties, electrical properties that are spectacular. And they light up, they show you the firmament, they were mentioned in the Book of Enoch. I thought it sounded crazy <laughs> when I read the verse about stars rising up to become lightning but not losing their form. So pretty much they, they release these impulses and you can see them coming out of the firmament. This is about 70 miles high. If you haven't analyzed this footage, you need to look at it. This is way above the clouds. You are not seeing clouds light up. This is definitely shooting out of the firmament. You can see waves move across it. But think about that and that much power when you're watching this video. It's from the channel Good Times For All. And this is very genius, this experiment. It's testable, provable. You guys can do it on your own, but check it out. Now what you're looking at here are the marks that electrical discharges make in a loose surface. What I have here is some baby powder and a lid, a metallic paint can lid, setting on top of the Van de Graaff generator. I'm going to get rid of all of these and smooth this back out so you can see that there are no more holes in it like we had. Now what we're going to get is, um, since this is the positive and this is the negative, some of this is going to come up to the positive right away and make some weird patterns on the top right away, kind of like pitting. Now we don't have enough power to get a nice charge to clear out all the powder all the way down to the hard surface, but um, we do see some really neat things. So let's go ahead and fire this up and get some... There's that beginning. You can see the powder, how it's... jumping up almost there was an alright one we're getting a lot of discharging through noise There we go. Now what we get, when we take a closer look at this, remember how it was smooth just a little bit ago? Look at that. Does that kind of remind you of anything? And remember we don't have enough power to get any real big electrical discharges. But if I had the coloring right and this and that and some more power, I bet I could make this look in a way that I could fool people and say that I had a lunar something or other up there orbiting the moon sending back pictures and people would believe it. When I zoom in on the moon and I take a close look, I can see all these circular craters, which they say are from impacts. My question is, if all these space rocks are flying in at different angles, not just 90 degree angles, where are the impact marks which create digs and canyons and trails? Shouldn't there be meteors and comets and asteroids coming in at various angles, all sorts of various angles? 
Are we to believe all of these meteor impacts are coming in at 90 degree angles? We should be seeing marks like this on the moon. Like I said, dig marks caused by meteors coming in at an angle. I can find images produced by Hollywood which demonstrate this, where a meteor comes in at an angle and makes a big giant gouge, right? And digs deeper and deeper into the earth as it hits. Well, in this case, we should be seeing these marks on the moon, except we don't. And if you even type in meteor impact marks, all they show you is a bunch of images of meteor crater in Arizona and a bunch of circular impact marks. I can't even find the right verbiage. I put meteor impact trails and then they show me trails left behind a meteor in the sky. So I can't find any actual images to display this in real life. All I could find were these Hollywood images. At the same time, uh, today what I want to demonstrate is the different type of marks that a high velocity object making an impact will create. So for instance, if space rocks are said to be smacking into the moon and making those round craters, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take my air rifle and I'm going to shoot BBs into the earth, the ground right here, and I'm going to shoot the ground at various angles. I'm going to shoot the ground at 90 degree angles, and then I'm going to shoot the ground at all different varying angles so that we can compare and contrast the different impact marks that the BB makes into the ground. And that's going to be my experiment is just get different types of impact marks from different angles so that I can demonstrate if objects were hitting the moon all day long from space, we should see varying different marks and not just circular impacts, which basically seems like that's all there is on the moon is circular impacts. And there should be different sorts of impacts, like ones that make trails and dig marks. So that's what I'm going to do today, is attempt to make trails and dig marks with my BB gun to demonstrate that if objects are hitting a spot at various different angles, we should see various different sorts of impacts. Good morning, my name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists, then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids, and then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. There is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis, named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. So, we get the orbit, turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, 
a Friday. <laughs> Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It'll be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth. 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. Sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Very serious. The performance characteristics exceed anything in our own inventory. And that, by the way, was the conclusion in this Pentagon document. This thing ran rings around our F-18 Super Hornets. Uh, that tried to chase this thing. It was briefly tracked on radar, but then it seemed to be able to, and this again is a phrase from the document, it's almost like it cloaked itself and became invisible. You'd think this was science fiction if you weren't reading it in Pentagon documents. And uh, we know now, which we didn't know before, that the government took this very seriously, and these things are being seen in our skies, whatever they might be, by pilots tracked on, on radar, and there's a serious defense and national security issue here. This is real. This is real. Today's report calls for the creation of a new unified combatant command for space, the United States Space Command. This new command structure for the physical domain of space, led by a four-star flag officer, will establish unified command and control for our Space Force operations, ensure integration across the military, and develop the space war fighting doctrine, tactics, techniques and procedures of the future. It is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Very importantly, I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force, separate but equal. <laughs>